This is one of six short films which look beyond hierarchy at two different approaches to self-organisation. This part is about learning and lasting. It's about how we keep motivation alive and keep going when things get tough and how we learn from differences, diversity and a changing world and adapt if needed. This needs to happen both at individual and collective levels. It's hard enough to learn on your own, but how do we do it together? This part looks at how this is done with a conventional hierarchy, as a reference point for what the other two approaches are shifting away from. In a hierarchy, it's often seen as the job of the boss to motivate people. And whether learning happens or not depends a lot on the boss, who's like a funnel through which learning needs to pass. Or, learning is institutionalised. And some traditional hierarchies have an accompanying mindset which deals with differences by excluding people or ideas which are too different and feelings are not welcomed at work, seen as being unprofessional. Some benefits here are that some people like to be told what to do and feel happy knowing their place. And some bosses are good at including others in decisions and cultivating learning. Effective line management reporting can communicate learning and the changes required and measurement systems can create consistency in reporting information across a whole organisation. Some challenges are that with a boss in charge, motivation can be hard to maintain. And if learning depends on the boss, then the capacity to learn is not built into the organisation, and it can go when the boss leaves. Or, if it is built into systems, they can be bureaucratic or have unintended consequences and hierarchies sometimes have a culture which is not very diverse or is resistant to change or can be blaming. Some approaches which can help here are delegating authority so people feel more ownership of their work, action learning groups to support people's learning on an ongoing basis. There are dozens of organisational learning systems to choose from and plenty of literature on organisational learning. Reflecting on attitudes to diversity, change and emotions at work to see how well they are serving the organisation. But what does all this look like when people organise without a hierarchical structure? The next two parts look at two approaches to self-organising which are shaped by different ways of seeing and being in the world. In organisations with a more collaborative approach and set of values, purpose and work are more likely to be influenced by people's personal values. It's often informal with less hierarchy and less or no job descriptions. So systems for allocating work, harnessing learning, evaluating outcomes tend to be less formal or even voluntary and ad hoc. And differences, diversity and taking responsibility for feelings are often more valued. Some benefits here are that being engaged with purpose, choosing involvement and feeling more autonomy over work without a formal hierarchy fosters intrinsic motivation, so people are often more motivated. Self-organisation of people is highly desired here and happens sometimes, though not always. Some challenges here are that without formal systems to allocate work, a few people often end up doing more of it feeling resentful or getting burnt out. Without systems for organisational learning or evaluation, it often doesn't get done. The lack of clarity and confusion created by all this can reduce motivation. Engagement and collective learning. It's common to see people saying that they value diversity and taking responsibility for feelings, but then what they actually do can be quite different. Some tools here include creating a safe space to talk through sensitive issues such as burnout, imbalance of work, or people saying they value difference and diversity but not doing so in practice. It may help to review your ground rules or your conflict management policy. Seek external facilitation if there aren't the right skills in the organisation to facilitate this conversation. 
Review how work and roles are allocated. Ask if it's serving the organisation and people. If not, seek a better way to do it, such as basing allocations of work on people's skills and motivations. Ask people what they want to learn and receive from their involvement, as well as what they want to give, and explore ways to find a balance of giving and receiving which will help sustain their involvement. If burnout is an issue, or there aren't enough people to do the work, then review capacity and make increasing capacity the top priority. Supporting individual and group health through wellbeing programmes such as mindfulness and counselling. Harness learning through circular processes to gain frequent feedback like the action and reflection cycle or the leading doing measuring process built into sociocracy. Sociocracy has learning baked into its methodology by making each circle responsible for their own learning, teaching and research and making this central to planning the circle's work. Create ways to evaluate and celebrate your work which fit with your organisation's culture and values. Another approach to self-organisation beyond hierarchy is more agile, responsive, adaptable and evolutionary and there are many examples of this. This part looks at holacracy as an example of self-organisation with a dynamic steering approach. Here, there are clear rules for how authority is distributed and decisions are made. This gives autonomy to people in their roles. Each role and circle has their own purpose, which is part of the larger organisational purpose. Learning and adaptation are supported by how tensions are processed in operational and governance meetings to evolve the structure. This approach supports non-attachment to individual egos in people's work. Some benefits here are that clearly distributed authority and rules for how this is decided helps keep things clear between people. Feeling autonomy and ownership of their work is a good way to sustain motivation for those who want autonomy. Linking of all work to the organisational purpose helps people feel they are contributing to something larger than themselves. Each person can be a sensor for the organisation and use the meetings to process what they sense into organisational learning and evolution. Some challenges here are that the constitution is like the rules of a game and some people find explicit rules challenging. Holocratic organisations highlight paradoxes and challenge people to integrate the polarities like structure and flexibility, autonomy within a system of rules and working with such paradoxes can be a struggle for many people. Working where there is so much change can feel unstable, unfamiliar and disorienting to some people who would prefer stability. Stepping out of ego and into service for a larger purpose is challenging for many of us. Some examples of tools here are the Holacracy Governance Meeting Process, which supports frequent adaptations to roles and organisational structure in response to a changing environment. Flexibility of role creation in Holacracy means that roles can be created to specifically meet learning needs as they arise. Holacracy's distributed authority system, which fosters intrinsic motivation through people having a specific purpose for each role they fill and autonomy about how they achieve it. The integrative decision-making process, which allows everyone to feel heard without getting swamped in endless meetings attempting to build consensus. And a way of understanding and processing tensions in organisations which support ongoing learning directly from people actually doing their work. To summarise, in conventional hierarchies, this depends a lot on those further up implementing organisational systems or using their individual capacities to do this and motivate others. In less formal collaborative approaches, intrinsic motivation can be naturally higher, but burnout is more of an issue, and often learning doesn't get captured. And in more agile approaches, the ability to learn and last is more built into the approach. But it's challenging for people to have the mindsets and behaviour to create the organisational culture and systems to do this. And if our world is complex and fast changing, it requires shifts in all parts of ourselves how we relate to each other and work together 
to be able to adapt in ways that are brilliant and inspiring. These are just three models, which don't exactly fit reality, and not one of them is better than the others. Rather, each model fits better into a different set of conditions, culture and values. Many organisations are a complex mix of these patterns, and recognising them will enable you to make conscious choices about which works best in your situation. Which is the better fit for your organisation, environment and where things are moving to.